Hey everyone, it's Stephanie from Scrap and Create, and we're on page three of Catch of the Day. And I want to share with you a couple of things that we're doing here. Of course, I want to give you the flat measurements, but which is very simple because I want to do some embellishing on this page. So this is seven. Is that right? <laughs> nope, it's not. Six by seven six inches across, seven inches tall, and you're gonna score a half inch. And it's gonna get installed on the center of this, the outside edge of page three. So this is the spine side, this is the outside. And I forgot to do my little tick marks to center everything. So this is seven inches, so we need to mark it at three and a half. Easier said than done. <laughs> Three and a half. And of course, this is eight inches. And it's a good thing I checked because I almost put these in on the wrong side. And we're going to find the center line at four. Okay, there we go. At least I did get the tape on. I hope everybody's doing well. I don't know if I shared with you guys. I'm so excited. My son got a job. I mean, it's not a great job. He's just, you know, graduating from high school. But the idea that he even had enough uh, ambition to go out and get a job, I'm excited about. I don't know about y'all, but things have really changed since pandemic. Nobody wants to go anywhere or do anything. Okay, so on page three, we've got this flap that's six by seven and opens to the right hand side. And this is the spine side. So it's pretty straightforward. So what's going to make this interesting is I want to do some embellishing on this side. And it's going to be static. It's not going to move around. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to add some charms, some ribbon, just some interesting things um, as we go to decorate this page um, on this side. So it'll stay static and then it'll just open. we got photo space on both sides. So it's a very simple but I want to go kind of heavy on the embellishments, which is uh, kind of rare. I haven't done this in a while. Um, I used to do it more on the Stamperia um, albums, partly because you get so few sheets. You really have to work, focus on adding embellishments because there's so few sheets to work with. When you get a bundle, you have so many choices. You can add lots of flaps and flaps on flaps and pockets. But I'm going to keep this simple. So for, for now, we've got this 6 by 7 flap that opens to the right. And then this is a cut apart from the 12 by 12 collection pack. So, um, yeah. So it just came off the 12 by 12 collection pack. And there's two in the 12 by 12 collection pack. One is on the signature page and one is on the cut apart page. So I'm using one for page three. I'm going to use the other one ta -da, for page six. So that's it for now. Next time we get back together, we're going to decorate and embellish this. Okay, guys, I'm back and we're going to start decorating page three. And this is a really simple page. There's only um, one flap. And I, I did that on purpose because I wanted to do some embellishing over here. I'm going to use this, but I'm going to add a few more things. So I wanted to keep the page kind of simple. And the interest is coming from the color blocking that I'm planning to do. So I'm pulling in the same patterns from page two. And this is just good practice for you guys if you want to start designing your own. Whenever you open the book and you have two opposing pages, it's good to pull them back in uh, occasionally and make sure there's good flow. Okay, so yeah, I just want to make sure I was using the same scale. So that's this is what we're going to do. So this is three and seven eighths by seven and seven eighths, three and seven eighths by seven and seven eighths. And it actually just turned out to be a leftover. And then also uh, this turned out to be a leftover. But as you can see, there's too much of a gap. So I went ahead and just created a strip that's going to break these two things up. And I think that works perfectly. So that is the current plan. This strip is a half inch by seven and seven eighths. And then of course, once you get these two pieces in, you trim this to fit, but roughly um, this right now is three and a half inches. 
by seven and seven eighths. So you may need to adjust that accordingly. If you make your strip a little bit wider, if you make your um, borders a little bit bigger, you'll need to adjust it. So I would recommend laying down the anchor page and your coordinating strip and then measuring this one out at the last minute after these two are placed. So there we go. <clears throat> and as usual, make sure that your pocket openings are to the left and right. And this is being applied to a finished eight by eight pocket page. the time the camera puts this in the uh, right orientation and half the time it doesn't and it's doing it the wrong way right now but I'm gonna go ahead and finish this I don't know I don't know what I'm doing wrong I want it in landscape and it's doing portrait I can fix it in editing but it's always better to record it in the right orientation just from the get-go all right oh that's tight. There we go. Oh, shoot. I made a mistake, guys. I'm going to lift it up and let it dry and reapply it. We need a magnet. Ay! Ay, ay, ay! I'm going to lay this over, but not let it touch. I'm going to draw a quick line. And I find my pencil. So I know my magnet needs to be on the right side of that line. And there it is. Okay, it's gonna go right there. So basically there's the line that it needs to reach, right? Otherwise it'll be too tight on this side. And actually, that's kind of tight, isn't it? Let's see. Mm. No, I got enough to cover it. So that's the important thing. Okay, so sorry about that. Sorry about backing up. Now we're ready to go ahead and put this down. And then once we get this done, we'll locate the magnet on the opposing flap. I, I usually do this in the first one I'm designing the flaps, but I kept going back and forth on whether or not I was going to add anything else to this page. So it took me a while to land on this being the final. I'm going to turn it sideways because I can't see both edges. we go. Okay, it's getting out a little bit wide because I'm leaving glue everywhere. So I took a break for lunch and as it, as it looks so far, <laughs> it didn't do any good. <laughs> I'm already making mistakes. I don't know what the deal is. It's not my day. I, Part of it is I had um, done all the interactive components and videotaped it. And then when I went to upload it last night, I realized that my camera froze. So I had to rebuild every page on, on camera. That's frustrating. And I just haven't recovered. <laughs> so I lost um, over an hour's worth of video which is all the flap installations, pockets, and all that. So it's not adding the decorative paper, but it's the um, the base part. So. Okay, now we're going to lay this in. I want a black divider um, line between this red strip and the anchor paper. So... I'm gonna lay it down like so. I think that's it. All 
Okay, now the last piece is the netting. So this one's gonna get trimmed to fit. So the height is right, which is seven and seven eighths, but the width needs to be trimmed out. Ooh, just a sixteenth of an inch, so it's pretty close. So I started out at three and a half. So I'm gonna go just a sliver below. I think I trimmed off about a sixteenth of an inch. And there it is. It looks pretty good. It looks perfect. So let's ink the edge I just trimmed. We'll get this installed. So if it's not perfectly fitted, the, the rule of thumb is to get your spacing right here because when you open the page, your eye is going to be drawn to the, the middle of the page, not to the edge. So if you have extra mat space, push it toward the hinge. Um, you won't notice it as much. It's more forgiving. Okay, now we're ready to put a magnet on this side. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing it out of order. Normally I put both the magnets in before I put any designer paper, but you guys can, you get it. I like this <laughs> just as a simple page. Okay, there we go. Just pressing around the magnet making sure it's secure. And then this is the cover piece. And again, this is pulling in one of the major patterns from page two. Mm -hmm. 12 by 12, okay. 12 by 12, 12 by 12. And the red is from Patterns and Solids, which is also 12 by 12. So basically everything so far is from either 12 by 12 collection or 12 by 12 patterns and solids. And then we still have to figure out what's going to go on the inside of this. And I haven't trimmed that out yet. So I'm going to take a break and get organized and see what papers I have left. And I'll make some decisions and we'll decorate. Man, the, the glue is just drying so fast usually have a, a second to wiggle it into space, a uh, place, but that's not happening today. I think I said that earlier, but I don't know what the deal is. Even this is not sticking, it's drying so fast. That's pretty unusual. Either that or I'm exceptionally slow today, which is quite possible. Okay, so this is from the 12 by 12. Oh, it's either the cut apart or signature page, I'm not sure. I've cut apart all my. Um, signature page, but I think it's from, it's from the cut apart page. So this is the 12 by 12 signature. I don't think it's from this, but it's possible. Since I already put um, paper on the back of it, I can't tell what the flip side is. So it's, it's from one of those. So it's either the signature page of the 12 by 12 or the cut apart in the 12 by 12. It's definitely from the 12 by 12. And I'm going to adhere this here, and I'm going to do some embellishing here. But I'm not going to do that right this second, um, because I want to figure out what the flip side of this is going to look like. And then also find a couple of other elements to add to this to make it interesting. 
and then uh, we'll add this and do the flip side, the B side of this flap. So I'll be back shortly. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome back. Um, we're on page three. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> I keep, yes, page three. I keep mixing up page three and page six. So we're actually on page three and on page six, I keep saying it's page three and then I run a banner and tell you I made a mistake. Hopefully you'll catch that. Um, I just, because the pages aren't in the book, it's really easy to get them out of sequence. And I did that. Uh, so I do run a banner that, that points that out. This really is page three. This is from the patterns and solids. And my glue cap is an opening. There we go. Um, so we're going to put this down. And then we're going to add an embellishment over here. Dress things up just a little bit because this is such a simple page. Which is one of the reasons why I did some color blocking on the directly onto the pocket page. I think a solid piece here with without wings on both sides would just be a little bit too boring. So this I think helps. All right, there we go. Oh my goodness, I took a break for lunch and it's a good, I can tell it's a good thing. <laughs> that just went down super easy. Okay, so there is page three in the closed position. This is a cut apart from the 12 by 12 collection and I'm going to add it here as just sort of a piece of something interesting. So what I'm wondering is if I want to mat it further or put a piece of paper sort of in a stagger behind it. I'm going to try something really quick and I may, I may want to keep it just as is. But this is what I was wondering, if this would look good. I don't like it. It's too much, I think. Um, this is also from the 8x8 and this is from the 12x12, 12 12, so I don't like that. So the other thing is we could try, you know, the light blue, pulling in the light blue. Mm, yeah, no, I don't like it. So I think I'm just going to go with this. So on page six, um, there's two cut aparts. There's uh, this one and the one I used on page six are slightly different. They're shaped the same and they're both framed in red. For page six, I trimmed off the red. So it's just this blue part and it really needed a mat and that's why I added it on page six. On this page, the red's fine against the blue. But when I tried to set it down on the other one, this part is red and red on red. It just didn't work. So I am going to go with just the way it is right now. I'm happy with that. I think I'm only going to put glue on one side so you can, if you want, slightly tuck your photo behind it. I don't know that you would, but I'm going to give, leave it open so we have that option. So now all I need to decide is, you know, how high or low I want to go. I don't want to go even with the page. I think I'm going to do it right about there. And I'm going to glue about half of it down. Trying to be careful because I've been pretty heavy handed on the glue and um, it keeps seeping out of the edges and that's so frustrating. Good grief. I'm just lining it up with the stripes on the page. I think it's going to look good there. Just want to make sure it still looks straight. It does. Okay. So again, this is uh, opened on uh, the side. It goes towards the center. And then if we want, we have room to add a couple more interesting things down here at the bottom, which I'm not sure I'm gonna do, but you will see it in the walkthrough if I decide to add some additional elements down here. Um, as I complete the album, I go back and look at anything that might be interesting to cut apart and use as layers inside uh, or on top of any of the flaps. So for now, I'm going to call it finished. This is one of the other things I was considering to go in here, and I still may put it down. 
Coastal Breezes, which is cut off one of the 12 by 12 sheets. And it's this pattern, this sort of ocean pattern. So here's the that one, Smooth Seas. I cut it right out of here. There's a second cut. Of, this is the signature page. And here's where Coastal Breeze came from. There is a cut apart page that has the second one on it that I used on page six. Okay. Uh, I'm going to make those decisions later, and for now, I'm going to call page three finished. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Um, I'll be back with page four and five soon.